Maritime Archaeology. Well, maritime archaeology is archaeology under the water, so things like ships and planes and submarines. Submarines, <laughs> exactly. Submarines and lands um, that's, that's been submerged by water, things like that. That you so you look under the water for all of these different things. Yeah. is something maritime archaeologists uses to remove sed sediment like sand or small rocks from a wreck or a submerged landscape. The airlift itself is not used to recover artefacts, it acts solely to remove sediment and expose features and artefacts, so the airlift pulls up water and the sand and small rocks using a suction and deposits the soil away from the site. Why don't we just use brushes? The answer's simple. When you use a brush, it gets all the debris into the water, making it really murky, and then you can't see anything. How does an airlift work? It works by pumping compressed air from the surface into the bottom of a long pipe, normally made of PVC or aluminium. As the air rises up the pipe, it extends. It expands and causes suction, allowing sediment to be sucked away from the site. The upper end of the pipe is directed down, current and away from the site. An airlift can also be used to clear the water, improving underwater visibility as the sediment is sucked away. The more pressure in, in, in the motor, the, the heavier the materials and the more sand it can carry out. What causes the suction? High pressure compressed air is introdu introduced into the bottom of a long pipe. The air is drawn up a tube. The air is between the bottom open end of the pipe and where the air is introduced, is introduced becomes an area of low pressure. Things always want to move from regions of high pressure to regions of lower pressure because there is a result. result with with a loosened force pushing them in, in that direction. This is the same for wind, which is caused by air moving from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. The water just outside the bottom of the tube is at a higher pressure than the low pressure zone just inside. So the water moves to the lower pressure zone. What is hydrostatic pressure? Pressure and the force per unit area on a surface. As you go deeper in water, the weight of the water above you makes the pressure increase. An object in water feels this force from all directions, but because the bottom of the object is a bit deeper, it feels a bit more force, and the up and down forces don't quite cancel out. There is a resonant force upwards on the object. The buoyancy force is upwards, and its strength depends on the mass of water the object is replacing. Archimedes principle. But there's another force acting too, gravity, and that's a downwards force and depends on the mass of the object. If the object is more dense than water, gravity wins and it sinks. If the object is less dense than water, buoyancy wins and it floats to the surface. What causes the air and water to rise up the pipe? At the base of the pipe is in deep water, higher pressure, and the top is in shallow water. Low pressure, the pressure difference causes the air inside the pipe to rise. Remember, things always want to move from regions of high pressure to regions of low pressure. The hydrostatic pressure, the difference in water pressure from deep to shallow is what causes the air bubbles in the pipe to accelerate upwards. The difference in pressure between the compressed air and the surrounding water is what causes the air to expand as it moves up the pipe. A bubble will expand rapidly to start with if it is at a higher pressure than the deep water, then it will continue to expand more slowly as it rises into shallower water and the surrounding water pressure decreases.